Uh, and now I want to create Java docs for this. So my first Java doc goes up here as author. I'm going to put Dr. K. Uh, and what do I want to say? Uh, just something like a stack, a bounded stack is a um, bounded uh, last in, first out collection of elements. Okay, and that's abbreviated LIFO. Uh, and now I want to put a paragraph here. So uh, Java docs are HTML, so they obey HTML tags. And I keep having to worry about the right key to save that with. Um, now what I want to do is since this is a bounded stack, I want people to who implement this stack to create it with a constructor that passes in an integer, and that integer is going to be the bound for the operation. But you can't really dictate that in an interface because you can't put a interface, I'm sorry, you can't put a constructor in an interface. You can only put methods in an interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that in the documentation. So I'm going to say that any concrete class that implements this interface should have the following one argument constructor. Uh, okay, so the constructor, I'm just gonna give the signature here. Uh, and because this is code, I'm just gonna separate it uh, a little bit. And the way, one way of doing that is to put this pre uh, HTML tag and then I'm looking for the uh, code here uh, so I'm gonna put the code that I want right here and I usually indent things a little bit uh, so this is the constructor public um, my stack, I'll just call it my stack int, and then I'll pass in a max. Uh, and actually, this is sorry, this is going to uh, throw something too. This is going to throw an illegal argument exception. And why is that? Well, the reason for that, let me finish this pre off here. Um, the reason I'm gonna throw an illegal argument exception potentially here is if this max is less than or equal to zero. Okay, because I don't wanna have a maximum capacity of a stack that's, that is zero. That's just uh, rather silly. Uh, certainly, you can't have one that's negative. You will get into all kinds of trouble probably in your implementation. Uh, all right, so the argument will be the capacity of the stack. Um, and the constructor will throw an illegal 
argument exception if max is uh, less than or equal to zero. Uh, however, I need to wrap these things in code. Um, in little code brackets here. Uh, and in general, you should wrap anything in a code bracket that is programming. Um, but it's especially important to wrap this in a code bracket because that when the Java doc sees this less than or equal to, if it's not inside of a code bracket, it'll try to interpret that as an HTML tag. Okay, that's all I want to say about that. Save that. Um, and what am I leaving out here? I want to say what a typical bounded stack uh, looks like so that uh, people know how to print out a bounded stack. Okay, so I'm going to say a typical bounded stack um, has typical bounded stack is uh, and I'm going to put this in code also. Uh, there is an open bracket. There's going to be E1, E2, and then it goes up to some EK. Uh, and then because this is a bounded stack, I want to put the capacity in the, I mean, this is going to be kind of the format for the two string method. So I want to add the capacity for the two string method because that is relevant to uh, what the bounded stack is. In particular, if I want to say, you know, does this bounded stack equal this other bounded stack, they might happen to contain the same three elements in the same order. But if their bounds are different, I want to say that those are not equal stacks. So a stack containing A, B, and C with a bound of 10, I don't want that to be equal to a stack containing A, B, C with a bound of 20. All right, so I'm going to add that there. Okay, a typical bounded stack is that. Uh, and I'll just say where E1, whoops, I will probably need code for these. E1 through EK uh, are the elements from bottom to top. And that's important because you've got to know which element is the top element and which element is the bottom element since we're writing this uh, from left to right. Uh, and then and n is the capacity. Okay. All right, I think that is good for now. Um, so that's our first uh, foray into Java docs for this. Uh, and then we have to put uh, this parameter here. Um, actually, the easiest way for me to do this is to just look Java API list. Uh, this kind of gives me an idea how Java does it. Uh, so E, the type of elements in this list. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. Um, all right. 
So let's save that. Oh, uh, there is one thing I forgot to put. I do not want to have null elements in this stack. So a bounded stack, a collection of non-null elements. All right, that makes it better. Okay, now I got to go ahead and put Java Docs in for all of these things. Um, and this is the other nice thing. If I, you know, type these exceptions in here in the signature when I go to create my Java Doc, the um, uh, these annotations just pop up. Okay, or these tags just pop up. So I'm just gonna pushes and elements onto this. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this kind of like the Java doc, doc does this, and the Java doc would say uh, pushes the specified elements onto this stack. Okay, and the specified element is the argument. Anytime you see specified in a Java doc, it's talking about one of the arguments. Okay, and this is the element to be pushed. And it throws a null pointer exception if um, I'm just going to put this in code two if elements equals equals null. And it throws an illegal argument exception, uh, I'm sorry, illegal state exception if this stack is, uh, is full. Okay. Uh, but yeah, basically if the depth equals capacity, it means the stack is full. Um, okay, so go down the line here. And I'm just going to say removes and returns um, the element at the top of the stack. Uh, the element at the top of the, uh, I'll say this. I like saying this because this means this object, the calling object. And it throws an illegal state exception if this stack is empty. All right, that looks good. Let's keep going here. Um, returns the depth of the stack, this stack. the depth of this stack. All right, if I was really clever, I'd think of two different ways to say the same thing, but I'm not that clever. Okay, and this returns the capacity. Okay, and clear um, empties the stack, empties this stack. And new instance. Okay, sorry about that. I keep going up when I want to go down because I'm used to using Mac again. Uh, this is going to returns a new empty stack with the same capacity as this stack. 
right, and because I don't have an imagination, I'm just going to do this. Copy, paste, save. Uh, and is valid. Uh, is valid. Uh, I'm going to say true if the stack, if this stack is in a valid state. Okay, and uh, as I said, this is basically has to do with uh, the representation invariant. This method is similar Okay, I'm just going to put this for FYI. Rep OK. Used in the book. Uh, I think it is program development. Java by Barbara Liskov. Okay. And just going to copy that. This stack is in a valid state. Okay, so we're getting there. All right, for secondary methods, we've got is empty, and this is a secondary method because uh, basically we can call it just by asking if uh, the depth is zero. Uh, and is full is a secondary method. Does the depth equal capacity? Uh, and then flip. As long as we have an iterator, we can do flip. And as long as we have a uh, iterator and new instance, we can do copy as a secondary method. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, so is empty returns true if the stack is empty, if this. is empty. If this stack is full. And this uh, reverses the elements in this stack. Uh, and this, a copy of this stack. Uh, actually, I'm just going to say returns a new stack that is a shallow copy of this stack with the same uh, the new stack. 
same capacity as the as this stack. Uh, new stack. Okay, so we are done writing our Java docs.